I was listening to somebody talk about, you know, um, how they enjoyed talking to their mother. And I'm thinking, my God, I had no idea what that's like. When I realized that, you know, I was a child abuse survivor, uh, it took me a week to come back to life. Really, I couldn't work, I couldn't do anything. This is In Therapy with Alex Howard, a first of its kind series that places you directly in the therapy room. My name is Alex Howard, and it is my hope that by bringing you on the journey with us, you too can learn the tools to transform your life. This series, we're following Pierre, whose life is overshadowed by a sense of unworthiness and a fear of rejection. Pierre has come to In Therapy to overcome his childhood trauma and to realize his true self-worth. It sounds like that there is some really deep awareness of this, but it sounds like you're still relatively early in the journey of actually metabolizing the trauma in your body. How is your ability to give love? That's a good question. Uh... Join us each week as we follow every step of Pierre's journey, both in and outside of the therapy room. As well as the tools I give Pierre in the sessions, I'll also be sharing weekly top tips so you can begin to unlock your true potential. This is In Therapy. My name is Pierre, I'm 44, I identify as a black gay man. I live in Brighton, where I work as a photographer, designer and business owner. This is Pierre's application video for In Therapy. I'd like to explore childhood trauma um, and how to overcome that, especially. When I was six, my parents decided to move uh, from Paris to the Caribbean, where we are from. Up until six, I was brought up by uh, my mother's auntie, so that's my great aunt. And um, then nobody told me we were moving, I just thought we were going on a holiday. And then I saw myself going to school. And then, of course, so I realized that, you know, uh, I didn't have my mother anymore. And then I was neglected. <laughs> full time because well, my parents had been neglected themselves so it's very easy to reproduce that cycle. I've been in recovery also for the last two years. I'm a sexual anorexic. It's the same addiction as, self, as a sexual addiction but is instead of having too much sex then I have too little. And the last um, fellowship I joined is uh, under Earners Anonymous. To me, that's exploring how unworthiness um, shows up as a, um, expecting failure in my profession. So uh, now my business is doing really well, but obviously with the looming crisis and recession, then I can, I can uh, also see the fear climbing up, really. So I would like to explore that. Um, that's it, really. Thank you. It's the day of Pierre's first session. Pierre has had some therapy in the past, so has some idea of what to expect. But starting therapy with someone new is always a little daunting. To see how he's feeling, my producers Oliver and Jeremiah greet Pierre as he enters the building. <laughs> not too bad, not too bad. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah, come, come and have a seat. So I'm, I'm Oliver. <laughs> Uh, and this is Jeremiah on the camera over here. Uh, but yeah, how, how are you feeling generally about the, the process and um, sort of, yeah, coming coming for therapy, basically? Well, I'm, I'm really grateful for the therapy, just that, you know, the fact that it's filmed, that's, that's the uh, um, twist. Sure, sure. But no, I, I, really, yeah, I, I really think, you know, it's a, it's a gift from the universe. So. Yeah? Okay, well, perfect. Good stuff. 
Oh, and here he is. Yeah. To keep this process as authentic as possible, this is the first time that I'm meeting Pierre in person. But I do have some notes from my team on what he's hoping to get from the sessions. In your first session, your therapist will try to get a really good sense of your background and what you're there to work on. From watching Pierre's application video, I know we have a lot to unpack. Here's the session. Pierre, welcome. I'm Thank really you. pleased that you're, you, can, you can take your tea, it's fine. <laughs> it sounds very formal. <laughs> um, today's probably going to feel a little bit like a game of 20 questions because really my, my purpose today is to, as best I can, understand you and what you're hoping to get from the time that we've got together. Mm. Um, and I think that's really my first question, really, that if you imagine the other side of our of our series of sessions together and looking back and feeling like you got what you hoped to get what what would that be like what what what's your your wish and your hope for this process um i'd like to get some practical tools to uh change my thinking hmm. really um or i think even more important than changing the thinking is you know, be present. Because uh, I think that that's the thing that uh, affects me the most is that, you know, if, when I'm not present, I feel like I'm reverting to my old automatic thinking, yes. which is negative most of the time. Yes. So uh, that's what, I, what I'm after. So what that tells me is... There's obviously, and I know a little bit of this from, from, from the history that, that I've, I've read as well, that you've already been doing some work by the sounds of it, because the fact that you have awareness of those negative patterns, and it sounds like there's some steps into a more, more presence or understanding that the difference between being present and being in that shows that there's already something that's moving, which is great, because it means that we can kind of un like hopefully understand more of that and help facilitate and support mm. that process. If you, although it sounds like it's not the case all of the time and it's not, you understand it's not the whole picture, but that negative thinking when you're in it and when it's happening, talk me through some of that, some of the thoughts, some of the beliefs, some of the, the things that come up. Uh, well, the main one is I'm not good enough. Okay. Uh, so, you know, there are lots of, I think, yeah, that's the main thing, really. Uh, and it, it um, uh, masks at you know yeah. uh, in lots of different ways so for example you know uh none of what i'm doing is you know uh worth pursuing because uh um it's not going to pan out the way i want to uh oh another one is i don't deserve to get okay. what i want because i'm not enough yeah uh, so, so i'm not good enough and yeah, therefore i don't deserve yeah, yeah yeah um Fear of rejection is a big thing as well. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if I'm not careful, you know, I won't even try out of fear of rejection. So in a sense... You know, I anticipate rejection. So I thought, okay, well, you know, I won't even try. So you reject yourself yeah. before you give someone else a chance. Yeah. Yeah. How about in um, intimate relationships? Talk me through how, it, how it's manifested there. Uh, well, I ended up marrying somebody oh, that's horrible to say it but that's the truth uh i ended up marrying uh somebody i wasn't really attracted to and by the time i got married i wasn't even in love anymore we i i, I loved my ex-husband but i wasn't in love mm. really and did you know that at the time or or was it that you didn't know what love felt like or no i didn't know it at the time i wouldn't i wouldn't have done it otherwise uh but you know, with hindsight, everything is obvious. So, uh, so I, <laughs> isn't I, that the truth? <laughs> so I can really see, you know, how I wouldn't I, have a job if everyone had hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just reproduced what well, you know the relationship I saw between my parents. Yeah. So um, that's good insight. So yeah. Well, let's let's come to that. I know a few little pieces, but I'd love to hear. The, the kind of the, the the detail of 
what at the old childhood and early years were like mm. and 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 how you you learned some of these beliefs all right so now i know that my parents were neglected so, so that they, they were neglected yeah okay. both of them yeah, yeah yeah and by the time you know uh they met and had children then the you know the cycle continued so uh for example so i was born in in uh, paris um and we my, my grandmother was really um tough so my, my mom's mom mm. um and she liked to interfere in my parents uh marriage most of my time was spent at at my grandmother's really uh, and i was raised actually by my grandmother's sister so i referred to her as my auntie but she was my, my great aunt yes okay um and she was my mother really because i i remember i i had uh, an appendicitis and you know just before going to see it uh, the surgeon asked oh so when afterwards you know, do you want to call do you want me to call your mom or your dad i said no no, no call my auntie hmm. um and then so that lasted until i was so you know until i was six really uh my parents were my my granny and my my auntie especially my auntie yes and then uh when i was six so we from my point of view we went away on holiday we were we went to uh this french island in the caribbean called martinique where I'm, where we were from and then after myself going to school which so, is another thing another thing to do on holiday yeah so um i was in heartbroken oh my god and you were on holiday with your parents i was on a holiday we we just moved they didn't yeah, tell but me. you thought you were on holiday oh, with your yeah, parents yeah, yeah. yeah so you so you were separated from your grandmother and and your auntie mm. wow yeah with no with no goodbye no 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 wow. no i remember uh once when we had just got there really uh my my mother was talking to my godmother about my first day at school and she was saying oh my god you were so calm and you know i wasn't i, I was stunned mm. i didn't know what was going on really yeah. so then i was neglected full time really mm. because uh, there was nobody around um that even before we left actually uh that was um what i now know is called fantasy addiction so i think it was around four years old when i i realized that whatever was on tv got more attention than i did so i thought oh you know what if i did what whatever i saw on tv so i you know i imagined so in my head i did everything you know from athlete to actor to singer to whatever but in a sense quite a lot of escapism Oh, like like way yeah, like ways oh, of yeah, just trying to yeah, put, put, yeah. put yourself some, yeah, somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, a few weeks ago, I can't remember why that thought happened. You know how I had, had that thought, but it was like, oh my god, you know, I don't even know what you know. Um, oh, I was listening to somebody talk about you know um, how they enjoyed talking to their mother, and I was thinking, oh my god, I had no idea what that's like because uh, that never happened, really. Yeah, and you know, there's something as well, which is, of course, the different things impact people in different ways. But sometimes having an a, a parent which is present but absent is more damaging than having a parent that's just absent, because when a parent's just absent, there's a void, but then something can happen yeah. in that void. When a parent is there but not really there. they're filling the space that doesn't allow something mm. else to 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 come in. Yeah, and I think I just gathered that well, I don't deserve to be loved. Mm. I did I am, you know, there's something wrong with me because uh, otherwise they would love me. Yes. Or, you know, I think the other thing was that the the sort of emotional support or warmth that I was used to was not there anymore. Yeah. So that's why I thought well, I must have done something wrong. I'm you know, something must have happened we all have a fundamental need for love when that need is not met it's overwhelmingly painful to just sit in the void 
And as children, we are entirely dependent upon our primary caregivers to meet this need for us. When they don't, we have no choice but to find a strategy to cope with the pain. And for Pierre, this was disappearing in his mind into a fantasy world where he was in control. It strikes me that you have really good self-awareness around a lot of this, like your ability to articulate your story and share it with me shows to me that you clearly thought about it a lot and you've it sounds like you've done some work on in some therapy with it before it sounds like there's also really good awareness about how that has impacted and impacting you and and shaping you i suppose what i I, what i'm wondering is what do you feel at this point is stopping? Because it, what it feels like to me is that there's a lot of really good awareness, which is great because that's, that's that awareness is often hard fought in life. That we have to really wrestle with things and to think about mm. them and to, to kind of tease them apart. And it sounds like there's there's some steps into a new a new self in a sense and a new way of being in the world. Mm. How how much do you feel that you've processed the emotional impacts of, of your history like like because, because to me there's understanding it in our mind mm. and then there's actually really moving what's in the body and what's held and, I, and i'm wondering where you are in in that part of the journey well it's only last year that i cried over my childhood wow i've been in recovery for like two years yes. before yes. um it's emotional anorexia and sexual anorexia uh, actually, this week is my two-year anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so um, up until last year, really, you know, I was gaslighting myself mm. because I really thought, well, I'm, I'm an ungrateful, ungrateful brat because, you know, I, everything was provided for when I was a child and yet I hated my childhood. Hated and, that, and that's the narrative you were sold, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because... When I, the few times I mentioned that to my father, you know, he's, he's from a generation where, you know, men, men's job is to provide, really. So, so, so in his eyes, as he far as he, his yeah, job. As far as he's concerned, he's a right jack, you know, he's, uh, he's, so yeah, thanks to recovery, I actually understood that, I, uh, I had been neglected. Uh, actually, even before recovery. I had I, uh, read a book called Childhood Emotional Neglect. And when I read that book, I thought, oh my God, that's me. Mm. Uh, but it's really when I started recovery that, you know, the penny dropped. And when I realized that, you know, I was a child abuse survivor, uh, it took me a week to come back to life. Really, I couldn't work, I couldn't do anything. Because um, because it felt so true. Yeah, and I don't know why what was happening, but I think I felt like you know I was realizing you know what had you know the impact that it had and it is having on me. Yeah, and I think you you put it very well if, uh, a minute ago as well, and you said that you were gaslighting yourself because one of the things that happens is that we have to find a way to make sense of our experience and. The best way to do that is to take the narrative that we're given and the narrative you were given is look how privileged you are look how lucky you are look at all that we do for you look at the opportunities that you're being given look at you compared to other people mm. and your inner critic like that voice inside of our mind which is always judging and criticizing has has kind of taken that narrative and just constantly repeated it which also what that does is that stops us being able to really do the healing work that we need to because we're constantly telling ourselves there's either nothing wrong or if there is something wrong that's just us being you know us being us as opposed to a legitimate mm. real issue of neglect and it sounds like that there is some really deep awareness of this but it sounds like you're still relatively early in the journey of actually metabolizing the mm. trauma in your body yeah, yeah. Your physical body and mm. your emotional body. Yeah. 
The work Pierre has done in understanding himself and his history is very important. And if this understanding stays primarily in his mind, it is in danger of actually leaving him more frustrated because he understands this history, but it's not changing how he actually feels in his lived experience. Four things to change. Pierre needs to do more than just understand in his mind. He needs to heal the trauma in his body. Tell me about the um, the addiction and the anorexia uh, piece, the sexual anorexia piece of it. Just walk me through how, because that <clears throat> sounds like that the sexual anorexia was almost like an attempt to solve the the addiction. Is that right, or just walk me through? The way? No, well, I don't. No, I don't think it's solving anything. I, I think it's just. I just uh, acted how I, you know, uh, what I saw, mm -hmm. the, the behavior I saw demonstrated, really. So, yes. and the other thing is, you know, I, I think that sort of un chronic unworthiness yeah. that led to the anorexia. So, for example, like, you know, I don't, I don't deserve contact. Yeah. So, for example, in you know, uh, sexually or any, you know, I would never, uh, and you know, out of fear of rejection. Yeah. Uh, then I would never uh, ask someone out ever, mm. really. So, um, and whenever somebody did ask me out, I felt obliged to say yes. That's how that's how I ended up going on a date with the man who became my husband, because uh, I didn't dare to say no. Yeah, really. Uh, and I mean, I don't want to make it sound like it. You know, I never liked it. I, I really, you know. I love, I really loved him. No, but I, I understand. Yeah. The, the thing is, I loved him because he loved me. Oh, um, and he's, you know, he really is the night, one of the nicest guys I've ever yes. met. Really, really, really. No, I, just I, I, that, I, I hear your care and your, and your sweetness towards him. He's just yeah. that, you know, I never, so far, uh, no, actually, well, now I'm changing, but up until, you know, last year or so, I never, picked anyone I always waited to be the one picked. yes so um yeah so that that was, that was uh you know sort of sexual anorexia um and then when we did break up then I carried the guilt for 10 years wow. really uh so that's a long time <laughs> that's that's a decade <laughs> it's like mm. you know that's a quarter of your life yeah yeah how is your ability to give love? Because for me, there's receiving love and there's giving love. And it sounds like you're work, you've worked hard, you're having to work hard on your capacity to receive love. And it sounds like there's movement and there's progress that's happening there. But how about giving love? That's a good question. Uh, I don't, I don't think I know. I, I don't, Actually, I don't even think I've ever even wondered how to give love because I'm so I'm so busy, you know, uh, quieting the voices in my head, you know, that I'm not good enough, I'm you know ugly and lovable, blah blah blah. That there's no time or space to actually think about mm -hmm. how to care for people. Because it, it strikes me that you and you feel to me as a as a kind and as a as a sweet man that but. It's really hard to to really give love to another, like in a personal, like intimate one on one way, when we don't know how to receive that love, and we haven't we haven't got good experiences in our history of that reciprocity of of love. Mm. That it's like that that's a new playground for you, by the sounds of it, of learning how to do that and. In some ways, that's very exciting because, of course, you know, giving and receiving of love is one of the greatest things about being a human, about about being alive. And it sounds like that's something that's that's starting to be. It sounds like in the last kind of year or two, starting to be discovered and birthed in you. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I really think that my business is part of my is a big part of my spiritual practice. Yes, I because. See that. Uh, 
it's so personal. Yeah. And it's so it's for you. It I is can creative. feel you in it. Yeah. So the thing about my experience of creativity is that um I is I feel so exposed, mm -hmm. really. And you know, I pour so much of me in it, of myself in it, that and I'm as I said before, I'm terrified of rejection. So, you know, that sort of exercise is, you know, is to learn how to pour my heart into it, but then sort of distance myself afterwards. And, and you know, when it, does, when it doesn't meet my, you know, expectations of success or whatever, not take it personally as, a, you know, as yet another rejection uh, or yet another, you know, sign of it's never going to work, don't bother, you know. Um, well, I think part of the challenge is separating your narrative and your stories from reality because part of the reality of business is you get rejected all the time exactly right yeah. and yeah, so yeah, yeah. to be able to put yourself out there and take those risks but not let those experiences reinforce that that narrative to be able to separate yeah. those those mm. pieces yeah So I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of time, time for today. I, I have so many more things I'd like to ask you, but I also feel like I'm starting to build a really good sense of, of you and, 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 and your experiences. I think, so one of the things I like to do is, is to have kind of homework between sessions to make sure that, that this work is not just something that happens in these two chairs, but it's something that is, which I think already for you it is. I feel like I'm, I'm stepping into a process that's already got momentum, which is great because it means that we can we can we can work with that. But to help continue it, what the, the the kind of image that I'm 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 sat with is there's the history and there's the the, the negative thoughts and beliefs about yourself, and then there's this new world that you're starting to step into, and that's quite new and that's quite embryonic, and you're learning about that and discovering what that is. I'd love you to take some time to think more about that. Like the life that you that you want to step into and to think about it from some different perspectives. I'm really interested to hear some of the goals and the ambitions that you have for the business side of your life. But also I'd love to hear some of the goals and ambitions that you have in for relationship, like the, the type of relationship that you'd like to have and what, what your hopes and, and wishes are for that. What you hope for in terms of friendships and the kind of love and support in your life, which is not sexually intimate support, but just the kind of holding mm. and the caring of, of those friendships. And so I'll, I'll, I'll send this to you in an email to kind of give a bit more of a kind of structure around it. But it's almost like going around a wheel of your life of the different pieces of your life and what the the hopes and the wishes for those are. And the reason why I think that, that, that that's helpful is, is firstly, it gives us some orientation and it helps sort of me understand what's most important to you mm. with that. Of course, in many ways, the knowing what you want doesn't guarantee you get it. <laughs> in many ways, the, 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 the blocks or what's, what's holding you back it's probably the, 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 a common theme within all of those, which is where we started, right? In terms of that relationship to yourself. And so I think that's a lot of the, I, I very much respond to what's what's in the moment, and what's in the week. So I, I don't ever come into a session and go, right, today we're going to do this because I've done this long enough to realize that's out the window, not in two or three minutes. So I'm not sat mm -hmm. here with, with, a, with a constructive plan of what happens over the weeks we've got together. But it feels to me that some of the things that would be most helpful for you are some help around the processing of the historical trauma. My sense is that some of those memories and some of those experiences, there's awareness, but they're still held. And in, in, so I think some support around some of the processing of that and having some practical tools and strategies also to work with the self-talk it sounds like your inner critic and some of those patterns of thinking can get a lot of momentum and can get quite strong. Mm. And I think the, you know, I talk a lot about awareness and you've already got a lot of that awareness. You know, one of my massively overused phrases is if you can see it, you don't have to be it. And the more awareness you have of what's happening, that gives you choices. The challenge is that when those patterns have got 
decades of momentum behind them, we can see them and we're still being them. Mm. And so having practical tools and strategies to break patterns of thinking, redirect our focus. I also think it's, it would be really helpful for us to do some work around your inner critic and that judgmental voice and getting some more distance from that, some more awareness of that. Um, and ultimately, I, I think the bigger theme in the work that I, that, I, that I see us doing together is your relationship with yourself. And the, for all of us, up until the point that we do something conscious to change it, our relationship with ourself is pretty much a mirror of how we were related to by our primary caregivers. And so actively working to change that is also what then changes our relationship with other people. As I know you already know, that the, the patterns that have played out in intimate relationship are in a sense just a mirror of, of what's happening internally. So that, that, that's my sense of some of the places to go. Um, I'll send you an email with, with, with the homework a bit more of, of a summary. But how does that sound to you and, and what questions do you... I've been asking you questions the last hour and a bit, so what questions do you have for me? No, I don't think I have any questions just yet. I'm, I might, I'm sure I'll reply to your email yeah. probably, but yeah. at the moment, yeah. no, I don't, I don't think I have any questions just yet. And, and in terms of direction and focus for us in terms of what I just described does that feel right does that feel missing of pieces or what, what what's your sense to that yeah no it's it's good to actually do some work around that and yeah. um yeah I look forward to um quiet down that uh, yeah. inner critic yeah and we'll certainly by next time get more into the experiential but I really appreciate you being so open in terms of sharing the history and, and your story which you know, you've clearly done a lot of work to to understand. And my 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 sense is, as I say, what I think we can do is to move that more into the the felt sense and the experiential and, and the processing of that. Mm. So, yeah, I'm glad you're here and thank you. Thank you. The real impact of childhood trauma is not what happens in childhood. It's the patterns of thinking, feeling, and behavior that it sets up for the rest of our lives. That is until we make a conscious decision to do our healing work and to change it. Continue to follow Pierre's journey over the coming weeks as we release weekly episodes of his sessions with me. You can watch here on YouTube or listen to the episodes as a podcast. To help support you in coming on the journey with us, I've created some materials to accompany the series. Each week, there is a bonus video with me and a worksheet to bring the session to life for you. In this week's reflections, we'll be exploring the ways that you have learned to escape your difficult feelings and emotions. You can find these resources for free at InTherapy dot alexhoward.com here's what's coming up next week where does it feel for you that you're working edges well i feel like i know the theory but then how do i move on start by just noticing that younger place inside of you and just really letting him know you want to understand him 